gave them deacons another hand. They did that, amen. I know I've been changed. Hey, glory to his holy name. You know, there was a day when I couldn't say that, amen. And I didn't even know that I couldn't say it. <laughs> but thanks be to God that gives us the victory in Christ Jesus. Isn't God good? Amen. That he'll pick us up out of our muck and our miry clay, and he'll put us on a solid foundation to stand, amen. And it doesn't matter who says what and who don't like it. He is going to do what he said he's going to do. And we can just stand in the glory. Hallelujah. Bless his holy name. Amen. Woo, glory. Thank you, Jesus. My brother and my friend is here. He said he's got to leave out, so that's why he's not up here with us. Amen. Thank God today for Elder Tony Dawson being in the house. He said he wants to stick his head in and check us out. Amen. And so we are so happy today for all that God has done. I came in and mother talked to me and I, uh, brother Eldie said something and he had me cracking up this morning. He said, so what'd you get for Valentine's Day? I said, I got a lot of love, amen, and a lot of food. And he said, uh, oh, okay, well that's good then. That's all you need. Well, that's right. That's all I needed. And so he said, look, he said he got a whole bunch of stuff. He piled it up. Amen. And gave it. Ain't that right? He piled it up and gave it. And I was like, Lord, I sure thank you. Amen. Because sometimes what we need to do is put our gifts in front so that we can then receive the blessing that comes from the gift. Amen. Now, you know, uh, I have a friend that gave me something and it's some, it's some lotion. And every time I go to put that lotion on and I think about it and I say, Lord, I thank you for my friend. Amen. Because your gift will make room for you. He made room for me to pray for her every time I put that lotion on my hand. Listen, your gifts right. will make room for you. And so we thank God today for Sister Pearl that her gifts Amen. Right. Made it to the table. I was on Facebook and I saw some stuff. I said, wow. Amen. The ladies didn't just wreck up. Y'all ought to see that deacon in training. Amen. He had stuff and stuff. Look, oh, I ain't supposed to say nothing. I'm sorry. Shh. Don't tell nobody, y'all. Listen. I was so proud of my husband. Uh, this year, you know what he did? What I asked him. Amen. I don't want no chocolate because I'm fat enough. <laughs> Amen. I want us to go somewhere and eat a nice meal. And he did that. I said, I don't want no flowers. I don't want no chocolate. I don't want nothing. Just, just let's go eat and have fun together. And I cannot believe it, but he did it. All right. That's good. That's all right, man. That's all right. Okay. Okay, now that don't mean that's what I'm going to want next year. <laughs> Amen. Remember, we told y'all last week that we got plenty of oil, but Saturday was Valentine's Day, and if there was something that you needed to do, you needed to get it done. So do we need any more oil today? We, we're good? The one that I was concerned about said he had it on point, so I'm not worried now. All right. Look, they looking at me laughing. God is good, y'all. Come on, let's pray. Father, we thank you today for all that you have said and done thus far. And we're asking, God, that as I open my mouth to speak your word, that your people would be able to receive, oh God, and that we will move forward in your spirit in Jesus' name. Yes, yes. Now, we're going to start off this morning in Romans, the eighth chapter, amen, and beginning at verse one. And the Bible says this, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh. Somebody say walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh. God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh. Verse 4 says that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not. Come on, somebody say who walk not. Oh, after the what? Flesh. Who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. But they that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. We thank our ushers this 
morning for your service. You all may be seated here in the house. Thank God for the reading of his word. And I wanted to just reach back just a little bit. Last week, Pastor Marcella brought this word, and he said that there were some things that we need to do. And number one was we needed to put a bridle on it. Do y'all remember that, those of you that was here? He said put a bridle on it. You see the horse there that if you have a horse, in order for you to get the horse where it needs to go, you've got to put a bridle in its mouth so that you can turn it where it needs to be turned. Amen? And the Bible says that our tongues need to have a bridle on it. Amen? And so he said that this was the thesis. If we are to be used of God, we must bring our thoughts, our words, our temperament, and our actions under authority of God's word through the power of the Holy Spirit. Everybody with me? The scripture was, if any man among you seem to be religious and bridleth not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart, this man's religion is what? In vain. So, he said, put a bridle on it. So last week we were talking about be careful how you talk. In other words, amen? It doesn't stop there, though, because you know what? <laughs> Talk is cheap. Amen. Folks are saying a whole lot of stuff and ain't really saying nothing. Amen. If you ever been around someone that speaks out of both sides of their neck, amen, one day they're saying one thing and another day they're saying another thing, amen, sometimes in the same conversation they will contradict the very thing that they had said at the beginning from where they got to at the end. And so we need to know that, yes, we need to talk the talk, amen, because we are Christian. I'm not talking about Christianese. I'm not talking about, oh, hallelujah, glory to God, amen. You know how we get in the store. And some folks are so super saved that they can't speak English. They're always talking in King James language. They're always talking about, oh, hallelujah, and glory to God. And that's okay. But what I'm saying is, when we learn how to be real with God, we'll begin to say what thus said the Lord. And when we begin to speak, the words will have power, not because it's made out of King James prayer language, amen, but because of the Holy Spirit that rests, rules, and abides within those that are called Christian. So then the talk <laughs> won't be cheap. Amen. Some people say stuff and you can't even believe what they're going to say. How many people did you invite to come to church and they say, I'm coming? Mm -hmm. And look, and look. <laughs> so say they laughing and we ain't seen them yet. Amen. Keep on talking, but keep on living right. Amen. The Bible says in Galatians, the fifth chapter and verse 16, this I say then, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Amen? I want to talk a little while today after being careful how you talk, you also have to be watchful while you walk. All right. All right. Thank you, Jesus. Listen, have you ever been a place where a lady's got on some heels or just some regular shoes and you're walking through the field or whatever you may be going? Amen? And you don't realize that little, little Fido <laughs> Little Fido had gone for a walk in that same area before you got there, and he left a hot load waiting for someone to come that's unsuspecting. And as they're walking, all of a sudden they're not looking, and all of a sudden you feel do this. Oh, man. And they start finding some grass to, amen, because they weren't being watchful while they were walking. Amen. And so you've got to be careful if you're going down a flight of stairs and you're, you know how we do. Sometimes we ain't holding on to the rail. We ain't paying attention to nothing. And we're just walking. So we've been walked down these flight of stairs a hundred million times and we think we know which every placement of every step is. Amen. But just that one day, the right pair of shoes is going to cause you to... <laughs> so you've got to be watchful how you walk. Amen. Y'all know Phineas and Ferb? <laughs> Amen. Phineas, look, I, my, one of my brother-in-law, he would walk. Amen. And everywhere he walked, he got both hands in his pocket. Now, <laughs> imagine you 
walk in both hands in your pocket and then you trip up, how you gonna grace? Amen. Because your hands is way down deep in the middle of your pocket, right? And so you gotta be careful how you walk. We talk about driving and texting. How many of y'all know that there's folks that walk? and text at the same time, amen. And they'll be walking and texting and you're like, what? you can't cross the street and text at the same time, baby, put the phone up, mm. amen. And so you see the picture here is a lady and she's walking and she's got her little text thing going and look, there's a manhole right there. Mm -hmm. Something could happen, amen. Something can happen and she can fall in if you're not being careful, if you're not watching the way that you walk. Amen? Now, you ladies, now y'all know they don't make shoes like they used to. That's why we can get them for $10. All right. <laughs> Amen. Every now and again, you'll be walking. Ain't done nothing. Hadn't even, touched, you hadn't even stepped in nothing. Amen? And the heel on the shoe. I be like, wait a minute. That ain't happened to none of y'all ladies. Okay, okay, now they with me now, honey. They with me now. Amen. You may be walking and there might be something that you step down and it'll mess up your heel and then you'll mess up and do that. Now, during the Grammys, Beyonce, she was coming down, she was doing her little walk and singing, and she got to that bottom step where whoop. <laughs> Amen. And all everybody saw it. Amen. Now listen, sometimes when we fall. Everybody sees it. Jesus. So that's why we've got to be watchful about how we walk. Amen. It was in the Garden uh, uh, of Eden, and Genesis, the third chapter, the Bible says, and they heard the voice of the Lord God, talking about Adam and Eve, uh, walking. What was he doing? Walking. walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord amongst the trees of the garden. Now, uh, what this tells me is that God used to walk with Adam all the time because it said it was in the cool of the day. This was not a abnormal thing to happen that God is walking with Adam. Amen? And so we've got to know that we are people, yes, we have, we live in a body. Amen? We are spirit though. Th this body, it's, it's going to burn up, it's going to tear up, it's going to decay. Get, look, I look, I didn't have to start washing that stuff right out of my hair. Y'all catch that later. Amen? Your body will start breaking down. The cartilage in your knees will start wearing off. Amen. Your toes, there's some little things that's called bunions that will end up on the side of your foot. Stuff that when you came from your mama wasn't had nothing to do with you. Amen. Look, there's a, I know we don't crack like that, but amen. You know, some of us, we still, there's some little lines right here. Amen. And so we can't look at ourselves and think this is all that there is because what we are, God created us in his form and in his image. And we, because we are like God, God is a spirit. And we are spirit and we live in a body and we possess a soul. And so we need to learn how to walk in the spirit like Paul told us to do in the book of Galatians that if you walk in the spirit then you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Amen. Everybody right. with me? All right. All right. Why should I walk in the spirit? There are some reasons why we do the things that we do. Why should I walk in the spirit? So that I have control over my flesh and that I can have fellowship with God. 1 Corinthians 9 and 27 says, But I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means when I have preached to others, I myself should be a cast away. I've got to keep my own flesh under subjection. Amen. Because if I don't do it, who won't do it? Amen. Listen, our flesh is some powerful thing. Um, when we fell in the garden after Adam and Eve messed up and made it hard for all the rest, look, now we got to wear clothes, we got to have pockets, we got to have jobs, amen, to pay the bills, and, and, and the circle continues. 
And so what we meant we must do, we've got to take control over ourselves. And I know we can do it. Oh, yeah. Because we have the power of the Holy Ghost. And some of us have just sheer willpower. Amen. I know a couple about 10, 15 years ago, back then they had been married for 20 years. Ain't neither one of them was saved. They've got the willpower in themselves to do what God said is the good thing and the right thing to do. Listen, if you're in a class and you're doing exercises, amen, if everybody else around you is doing the exercise and then you get tired, what you do? You might not do it as vigorously, but you're going to still make the motion because you want everybody to feel like, yeah, I'm still doing the stuff with them. Amen. We can do what we need to do. Have you ever had to go somewhere, but you had to go to the party room? <laughs> you Look, you find a way to hold on to that. <laughs> and, amen. Until you get to where you need. Look, some folks won't even go unless they're at their own house. And they'll find a way to hold on to it until they can drop that package off in their own restroom. Amen? So we can do it. We can do it. We just have to know that we're not doing it by ourselves. That we are yet being endued with power from the Holy Ghost. It is only in Him that we live and move and have our being. It's only in Him that we can be under subjection. Because He is the one that causes us to have what Galatians 5 says temperance amen you know our bodies are powerful the flesh is powerful if you hungry and you look look you'll be walking and you get hungry and you be like <laughs> amen. and then you smell something that smells really good to eat and you like you can't hardly wait look my husband was soft talking to me the other day and i was so hungry i was just saying mm -hmm. <laughs> in your situation and in your circumstance and you have forgotten who you are in Christ. 
At all times. We have, look, you can't. Mm -mm. Jesus, thank you, Lord. God don't want no part-time Christians. All right. You can't clock in and clock out at the end of the day when you want to go where you want to go and do what you want to do and say what you want to say and go where you want to go and do what you feel like you want to do. You've got to know who you are if you're in Christ. Be in Christ. Amen. There's too many of us. We're so back and forth. We should look <laughs> straddling the fence so hard that if, if, if a wind blows, <laughs> you're not supposed to walk so close to the line that you don't know from day to day, from moment to moment, who you are in Christ. So we should always walk in the Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Who should walk in the Spirit? All of those that claim the name of Christ. Do you claim the name? Look. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> when I lived in Oklahoma and bought the building for our former church, amen, uh, we bought the building and it was a church before us, and uh, we bought the building. We've been in there about six months, seven months. Here come some folk, and they sit down and we're counting them as visitors. How about they get up and they say, oh, we belong to this church. Now, I'm the pastor. I ain't never seen you before. <laughs> but you belong to this church that I pastor. Okay, so how does this work? Well, see, they used to go to the church that was there before we bought the building. And so here they come now saying that they belong. Well, they don't really belong because it's just because the building is the church doesn't mean it's the same church that you came from. Now, I know that the tall... Uh, Caucasian gentleman that was pastoring there before me don't look nothing like me. So when you came through the door, you had to have known that there was something different. There's a different sign on the front. Amen. There's some different people on the inside. And so when we become Christians, there's got to be a different name on the front. There's got to be something different on the inside. Something has happened. There's been a change. And if you don't realize that there was a change, then maybe there wasn't really a change. All right. <laughs> yeah. Help us, Jesus. Yeah. We've got to start looking on the inside, we look in the mirror just to make sure our hair All right. is right. Amen. Make sure that after we come out the bathroom, that you know we ain't left our skirt tail up inside our pantyhose and stuff. But we've got to begin to look further in. We've got to get into the spirit of God. It's only in Him that we're able to even talk right. Out of the same mouth. Remember the scripture last week. Out of the same mouth cometh blessing and cursing. And He said. Honey, this ought not to be. All right. Amen. Do we do it? Yeah, we do it. <laughs> ain't no need to sit up in here lying. He says if we lie, we ain't telling the truth and we ain't in Jesus. So might as well go tell the truth, shame the devil, and get things right before God. That's right. Only when we're real can we then be able to do what God has called us to do. All those that claim the name of Christ, Philippians 3 and 3 says, for we are the circumcision, who worship God in the spirit and have no confidence in the flesh. Amen. Amen. Because your flesh will fail you. All right. Get you a call. A cold. Get you a call. Mm. Amen. Your body will begin to attack you at times. You'll have a fever and look, you'll be walking along I don't feel, I don't feel. <laughs> but look, my, look, you see this big brother? Right, this big strapping strong brother Jeff right here. I remember there was a day that he was at work and I got the phone call that he passed out. Blood pressure done got on to him. Amen. So we have to know who we are so that we can be in control and it not be in control of us. Thank you, Jesus. Have no confidence in the flesh. And John 4 and 4 says that God is a what? God is a what? Spirit. And his worshipers have to worship in how? Spirit. And in truth. Thank you, Lord. All right. Be careful. Be watchful how you walk. Because we are spirit. And if we'd ever get in real contact with God, if we re ever really begin to commune with him, then we'll know who we are, the power that resides on inside of us. Oh my God! You, we were driving 
other night, come back home, and we passed by the pony. <laughs> <laughs> the parking lot was full. Right. I said, Lord, now look at that nice building there. <laughs> look at all them cars in the parking lot. Amen. I, nobody probably was fussed in there right at the moment. Amen. And we're here at the tribe. And folks that belong at the tribe, sometimes we can't find. <laughs> Amen. I got a phone, a, a text the other day, said, Pastor, this is my new phone number. I'm like, Quit lying. you got a new phone number again already. <laughs> Amen. We got to know who we are. We have to walk in the spirit. That's right. Only when we walk in the spirit that we will fulfill the lust of our flesh. And y'all know, I don't have to explain. <laughs> Brother, I don't have to explain what the lust of the flesh. <laughs> Brother, I already know. You, you, you know what the lust. Look, you don't even have to be a Christian. And folks, that's not. They can tell you what's not godly, what's not right, what's not the way in which we ought to walk. Amen. Because they'll walk with your with your fine tooth comb and comb your hair for you. Okay. Thank you, Lord. How do I walk in the Spirit? Soberly, circumspectly, diligently, and accurately. First Peter five and seven says this. <sighs> Lord Jesus, I almost left this part out. I almost went with eight, but then I saw this. I said, Lord, we need this. He said, casting all your care mm -hmm. upon him mm -hmm. right. because he cares for you. Mm -hmm. My God in heaven, if we would ever learn to really trust God and cast our cares yes. upon him. Yes. And you know that word there, casting, it, it, it doesn't even mean, you know, we think that we got to take and cast it. Like we, we like we fishing Deacon Elliot. Uh -huh. Amen. But he's not even talking about casting. He, the word actually means to roll this. Thank you, Jesus. Even when I've got so much stuff on me, when when the, the pressure just seems like it's going to box me in, I'm you. I, I don't even. I, I can't. I'm so burdened down. I can't even carry this thing. He says, "Don't carry. Roll your cares upon." Because I care for you. Jesus, thank you, Lord. He says, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour, whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. How do I walk in the spirit? I've got to be sober about this thing. Right. Amen. The Bible says, be not drunk with wine, but be filled with the spirit. Amen. Don't, don't be drunk <laughs> with wine, but be filled with the spirit. Right. Thank you, Lord. We've got to walk circumspectly, accurately. Amen. If you ever go into a place where there's these mountains and uh, th there's a place in Africa where there are these mountains and the church that the people go to are way up on this high top mountain and the ledge is about one of these squares. Amen. Around the mountain. And they leave home walking early in the morning so that they can make it to church. Amen. Miles to go and miles to come back. But once you get to the bottom of the mountain, you've got to navigate. Hold on to the wall. Move this way. Then the mountain twirls around. I said, Jesus, we, we just jump in the car. We park in the parking lot and we go. But these people are after God's spirit. And wherever his spirit is, they're ready to get to where that is. Right. Now, his spirit resides in me, yes. But when I come together with my brother and my sister, because one will put a thousand to flight and two will put ten thousand right. to flight. So yes, I need to be with somebody that's in like mind and like spirit as myself. Because we've got work to do. Yeah. Right. Thank you, Lord. I want to introduce you to this man. I love how the Living Bible talks about him. His name is Enoch. 
You see his feet is off of the side. He looks like he's floating, doesn't he? Mm -hmm. The Bible says Enoch was 65, to say, mm -hmm. years old when his son Methuselah was born. I'm going to just let that settle. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Afterwards, he lived another 300 years doing what? In fellowship with God. All right. And produced sons and daughters. Then, when he was 365, whew, I'm tired just saying that. Okay. 365 and in constant touch with God, he disappeared. For God took him. Can you imagine that you're in such communication with God that God finally just says, you know what, ain't no need in you staying down there. Just come on up here. All right. <laughs> somebody up in there. Mm -hmm. Amen. You, you look, just be real with God. He already know. All right. Ain't All right. Well, like we be trying to hide stuff from God like he can't see our hearts and the intent of the actions before we even do anything. Let's do what God says. Let's be in fellowship with him and in constant touch with God because he wants to be in fellowship with us. He is a God of fellowship. He wants you. Y'all look at me like, what's she going to say next? I'm not going to listen to say. He wants you. All right. He doesn't want what you have. He doesn't want your money. He doesn't want your children. He doesn't want your car. He doesn't want your house. He wants you. Yeah. Right. Amen. And look, I remember being courted. Dick and Neil. And uh, I said, huh, I don't know. I don't want nothing from you. I just want you. What? <laughs> you mean, I don't got to, no, you don't got to do none of that. You mean I don't got to, nope, I don't got to do that either. I just want you. Can you imagine somebody just saying, I just want you? Hello, somebody. Ooh, glory. You be like, all right. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. He just wants me. No money. <laughs> no fancy clothes. No expensive house, no car looking like a BMW or a Mercedes, just wants me. And that's what God wants. He just wants us. He just wants to hang out. Amen. You know how you call your friend up? Hey, is that what you doing? I ain't doing that. Let's go to the movie. Let's go eat something. He just wants to hang out with you. We serve a God that is so awesome. So superior, so intelligent, so, I mean, he's the creator. Mm -hmm. And he wants to hang out with little old me. Mm -hmm. Isn't that amazing? He just wants to walk with us on a daily basis. Walk with us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. We need consistency, communion, and consultation. And I'm almost done. Thank you, Lord. Consistency, communion, and consultation. When I walk with God, I'm not double-minded or divided in my constitution. There's a level of consistency in us 
when we begin to really walk with God. Look, you know that person that every time something happened, they, you know them, they at your job, they at your school. Every time something happened, they come, oh, I'm going to do. Like, what is wrong with you? Oh. Amen. Look, but when you know Jesus, it doesn't matter what the storm and the wind and the wave decide it wants to do. I'm in the boat with Jesus. And he's not going to let, look, he's in the boat. You think it, if he's in the boat, I ain't going to worry about He ain't going to let the boat capsize and me in here. Okay, but look, and if he does let it capsize with me in here, he in here too, so he can still say, because I seen him walk on that water. All right. Thank you, Jesus. And so we've got to walk in a place of consistency with God. The Bible says this, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Brother Jeff said it this morning. He said that there's refuge in the word. If you continue to read it, if you begin to ingest it, you begin to think about it, let it roll around. Amen. All of a sudden, when stuff come up, you can be consistent because you already know what the word says. You already know what Jesus said. I don't have to worry about dying in the morning. So what if I go? I had a friend, baby, when uh, when uh, the, the DC sniper, he, when he was out doing his thing, she didn't even want. She would send her husband out to get gas in her car and run from one building to another because she didn't want to get sniped. I said, sis, now, now you say, what are you talking about? You're not supposed to walk in fear. You're supposed to walk in faith. And look, and if it's my time to go, you, the, you, the D.C. sniper don't have to get you. You could be laying in your bed and a tree fall, pow, and kill you in your bed. So we have to move and walk in the spirit so that we can be consistent. We need to have communion with God because prayer brings communion. The Bible says in Matthew 26 and 41, all of you must keep awake, give strict attention, be cautious and active, and watch and pray that you may not come into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Amen. But when we're in communion with God, when we've got the consistency, and we come into the communion, then we have some uh, consultation. How do we get it? Through his word. Amen? Every pro but he, he said, do it, do it, he said, trouble don't last always. I'll be listening. Mm -hmm. Amen? Trouble don't last always. That's right. And so when we consult God, Lord, I don't know how to do this. Could you show me? Is there somebody else that had gone through this so that I can take it up and, and figure out how to how to work this out? You know, when, when Elijah was in the cave talking about, I'm the only one left. And God came and told him, look, baby, I've got 7,000 more prophets that have not bowed their knee to Baal. Because when his word comes, it gives us consultation. Thank you, Father. Counsel, the Bible says, in the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. The Bible says that there is wisdom in the multitude of counsel. God's counsel with his word and the spirit of God, we can walk, thank you, Lord, and be watchful and know that we are in his presence. Know that we are in his spirit. Know that no matter what comes up against me, that it's going to be all right. Proverbs 16, 1 and 33, it says the preparations of the heart in man and the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. So everything that we have need of comes only from the Lord. The Bible says in Ephesians 5, and I'm closing, therefore, Follow, be ye therefore followers of God as dear children and walk in love as Christ has also loved us. Genesis 6 and 9 lets us know that Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations and that Noah did what? He walked with God. Now you remember it was only him and a few others that were saved from the flood. That was eight people total. Why? Because Noah walked with God. He knew him. 
He understood what he was saying. He obeyed him. Go on and make you an ark. But there ain't never been no rain. That's okay. See, when the drip drop started coming, then there was already a place prepared for Noah and his family. Exodus 18 tells us that we should teach the ordinances and the laws and shall show them the way wherein they must walk and the work that they must do. And God says that I will walk among you and will be your God and you shall be my people. Does anybody want to be God's people in the house today? He said that you shall walk in all the ways in which the Lord your God has commanded you that you might live. I want to live. Amen. And the way that we live is when we walk in his word. Bible says be that diligent to heed the commandment of the Lord which Moses the servant of the Lord charged you to love the Lord your God and to walk in all of his ways. Thank you Lord. And the one that you all know, we know it. <laughs> Thank you Lord. That the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. Yes. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. And then he gets down and he says, yay, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. Why? Because God is with me. His rod and his staff, they comfort me. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I want Jesus to walk with me. In my trials I want him to walk with me. In my sadness I want him to walk with me. I just want Jesus to be by my side because there are some days that I'm walking and I need somebody to hold my hand and those times when I can't do the walk. He said those were the times that you saw the footprints and there was only one set. See I never left you. I never left you alone. I never left you alone. He said it was during those times that I had to carry it. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, let's stand together in this house. I want Jesus to walk with me. Walk with me. All right. Walk with me.
what he does best. Amen. Amen. He is a healer, and we thank him because he is Jehovah Rapha, the God that heals us. And we thank you today, Lord God, for your daughter and our sister. And we ask you that even now, Father, that you would touch her, oh God. Cause her heart, Father God, every right. ventricle, every yeah. part of her aorta, yeah. Lord God, whatever it is. And we ask that if there's any blockage, that it be dissipated now in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for the anointing of your Holy Ghost. And we ask you now, God, Father, that you would be the healer, oh God, as you have claimed yourself to be, as we have known you to be, even for our own self, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for what you're doing. And we thank yes. you for our sister Mary, God. Yeah. <laughs> thank you for blessing us with you today, Lord. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We ask yeah. you, Father God, that you would touch her every place that she hurt. Yeah. Lord God, we move you, every obstacle out of her way in the yeah. name of Jesus. Yeah. And we declare today that she is healed and whole in Jesus' name. Yes. Father, we come touching the very hem of your garment, Lord God. Father, moving everything, Lord God, that is not like you, every manifestation of sickness yes. and infirmity yes. and disease. Yes, we command it to go now yes. in Jesus' name. Yes. Thank you for what you're doing, dear God. Lord, I give you the praise for what yes. you've already done. Lord, thank you for the testimony that comes forward even yes. now, God, yes. in Jesus' name. Lord, we give you praise. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Glory thank to you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Oh, we bless your name. Thank you, Lord. Love you, sister. Love you. Thank you, God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Bless your holy Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, bless you, Jesus. Thank you for the power of prayer. Amen. Thank you for meeting our needs. Thank you. You're such a good God. We worship you today. We worship you. We worship you. Thank you for being so good. Thank you, Lord. Thank Amen. You, Lord. And everything that you have in yes. life, every resource coming to your hands in the name of Jesus. Thank you for what you do. Thank you, Father God. Expand your heart strength, Lord God. Father, as you've already yes. won, that will give out of your heart out of this. I thank you, Father God, that you will begin to bring the return yes. in the name of Jesus. Everything that she has need of in her home and her family, Lord God. Lord, that healing virtue would flow from her hands, oh God. Yes, in the name Lord. of Jesus. Father, that she would begin to evangelize the city, oh God. Father, that men and women, Lord God, will hear her voice and be yes, found that they're being called and drawn towards you, oh God. Oh, in yeah. the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Oh, yeah. Father, I'm thanking you, God, for living waters that flow out of her belly, mm. oh God, to the overflow in the name of Jesus. Power and the anointing, oh God. Father, as never before, Lord, that it would escalate in Jesus' name. Thank you for what you thank do in the house. Thank you. Oh, we bless you today, oh God. We command every bit of sickness in this house to go, every cold, every flu, every cough, every diabetic pain, Father God, every nerve, every rheumatoid arthritis, we command it to go now. Cancer, you have to go. You have no place here, and we command you to go in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you for what you do. God, we thank you, Lord God, for the very all of your spirit, oh God, that anoints your people. Father, that causes us, Lord God, to be well anointed, causes us, Father God, to move Move in your spirit, God. Yes, yes. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I ask you today that you will cause everything, every crooked path to be made straight in Jesus' name. We command even the reproach of Egypt to get off of your people in the name of Jesus. That we will go through on dry land. God, that nothing that we have will be missing, nor broken in the name of Jesus. And God, that we will go in and find good pasture in Jesus' name. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. 
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Let the wind of your spirit blow. Thank you, Father. Revive us and refresh us again. Every place that we've been broken down, we ask you that you would build us up, God, in the name of Jesus. God, those places that we've been bandaged up, we ask you for the healing power, the virtue to be manifest in us in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, cause everything that we have to do, Lord God, that it would go quickly, God, in the name of Jesus. Father God, take us from here to there in the spirit. Father, that we might move across every obstacle. Lord, that every mountain will be removed and cast into the sea in Jesus' name. Yes, Lord. Thank you, God, for what you do. Oh, we bless you, God. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Put your hands on every yes, one of those yes, children. Yes, yes. Every baby, oh God. Yes. Cause their mind, Father God, to flourish in your spirit. God, that their schoolwork, their studies, oh God, would become yes, simple yes. to them in the name of Jesus. Yes. We ask you, oh God, as you open the windows of heaven, yes. that every job need, Father God, would be yes. met in this yes. house. Yes. In yes. the name of Jesus. Yes. God, that relationships would be repaired yes. and restored in yes. Jesus' name. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord. Thank yes. you, God. Yes. Lord. Thank you for your presence, Lord. Yes. Oh, we praise you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Oh, God. Bless you, Jesus. Thank you. I say, say yes. Yes. Yes, my Lord. My soul say yes. Yes, Lord. My soul say yes. Yes. Yes, my Lord, my soul say yes, yes, Lord. In the morning, yes, 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 my Lord, in the morning, yes, yes, yes. All day, Lord, yes, 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 my Lord, all day, Lord, yes.
walking around and stepping in stuff. But we are free to live the life. I know I've been changed. Yeah. Amen. That's good news. That's good news. We've had a great day on today. A great time in the Word. We thank God for Pastor Michelle pouring out into us as the Lord gave to her. So I believe that that Word was helpful to us. Isn't that right? Yeah. Amen. And we're going to go and look for ways. Look Look for areas in your life where this applies. Amen. God always, whenever he brings us, he always has something to say to us. Amen. Amen. Folks may have shackled us. Folks may have bound us up. Stuff they did. <laughs> Stuff we didn't have any choice in. Stuff that uh, we, we, you know, we couldn't say no to. Right. But now, well, we, are, we are new creatures. Right. Old things right. are passed away. Right. 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 Old all things. I'll become new. Yes, right. Got a chance for a new, brand new start. Today. Amen. 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 You don't have to, you know, same stuff that happened to you when you're in the Lord. He'll, he'll learn to, he'll protect you. Yeah. Amen. Right. He'll bring you out of it. So stay encouraged. Keep looking up. Keep smiling. It looks good on right. you. Amen. Any closing words? Anyone else? need to say anything that helped you. It's come sometimes just good to say that that helped me. Well, yes, sir. I don't want to say, you know, I've been with y'all a long time here. Yes, sir. At the church. And, and, and I'm so it's an honor to be in other y'all. Amen. Amen. And it's the honor for the church family. My church family here to, to, today is a great honor for me to be a part of y'all and y'all being a part of me. Amen. And, uh, you know, I just want to, I don't want to go any further with it, but I want to church and I want to pastor. Yes, sir. Uh, I've been working with this same thing and dealing with it. I, I, I want to marry Maria. All right. All right. All
Jesus. Uh, I know that you're excited. Ain't nothing else I can say that's going to top that. <laughs> We may as well just go home. But we're so happy, so happy for you. And uh, we, we've talked uh, quite often, quite talked a few times. And, uh, you know, that scripture from James, it says, Pure religion, undefiled before God and the Father is this, to care for the fatherless and the widows in their affliction. And uh, Sister Mardell and Deacon Neal have taken on four, uh, well, three additional children that were not theirs to care for. That's a tremendous responsibility. Y'all know that? But that's fulfilling that scripture. And by doing this, you take that scripture on, and God, man, God got a whole lot more in store for us. I believe that. I believe that after hearing what you said earlier this morning, that people are going to start coming because they need a blessing, because they need a touch. And Sister Mary, you're a testimony to that. You're a part of that. This is your granddaughter. Tell me her name. Miss Stephanie. Come here, sweetheart. We're glad to have you. Listen, we're glad to have you. I know you were here last week. I didn't get a chance to say hi. What I do? What you going to call me to do? It's good to have you, Brother Michael, coming again. We appreciate you being with us. Sister Jackie! See that you're doing like this? Thank God for you being with us again today. Amen. Little, little, El, little, wait, little, LJ. Little, little Jail, and then LJ. Little, little, little Jail. Okay, two times removed. Little, little Jeff. Jeff, Jeff, and Jeff. Okay. All right. Is there any any other? Brother Tyshawn, you have? $100. What? told you today that they love you, I want you to know that I love you. 